Hello, this is Angela with Park Rose Permaculture. I wanted to make a quick video to talk about growing citrus indoors. I made a mention in one of my earlier videos, this is my front sunroom where we had to replace all of the windows and this whole header for the wall. But this is a lovely room that I'm in the process of painting and it gets tons and tons of light from two directions. And so this is a great place to have kind of an orangery, right? To have a place to keep citrus. So I was recently gifted a pink lemon, a variegated pink lemon. And I have other citrus that's quite large that I have stored in my dad's greenhouse. I did a video last summer on repotting one of those. And that's because this room was a construction zone. So for the interim those things are stored at my dad's where they do very well but this room functions really nicely as a place to keep citrus i eventually can put my citrus outdoors but right now it's far too cold you can see my front yard here it's gray and rainy today and not warm enough to have citrus but the problem arises that the time of year that my citrus is blooming is when they're indoors and citrus are bee pollinated i don't have any bees in my front sunroom. So I need to help hand pollinate if I'm gonna get any lemons off my tree. So our lemon trees don't flower all at once, so you need to come back and check them every day. Here you can see a series of tight buds, more mature buds, open flowers, and then spent flowers with a little tiny lemon on it. Let's see if it'll show here. to serve the function here of our pollinators because we are lacking honeybees in indoor spaces and native bees. So what I need to do is to help transfer pollen here from the anthers to this center part here to the stigma and that will um, make sure that I have a higher fruit set. You can see right here. When the stigma is receptive to pollen, it's sticky and it's very easy to just take our feather. You can also use a brush and transfer, encourage the pollen to move onto the female portion of the flower. Now, keep in mind, I've made other videos about hand pollination in the past where you may have seen me use a brush and knock pollen into a dish and move to a separate tree. Those are for things like my pawpaws where they're not self-fertile and you need two trees of two different varieties to get fruit. Lemons are self-fertile, so you can pollinate straight from one to the other and just that brushing action is really all you need. Now, because they're pollinating in sequence, you can see a tiny baby lemon here. I definitely wanna make sure I'm coming back every day. A percentage of these flowers will on their own self-abort. It's much like a uh, June fruit drop that you'll see in your fruit trees outside. A number of these will drop off before they ever fully bloom. That doesn't mean anything is wrong with your tree. It means that the tree knows it has set too many flowers for the size of the tree. So don't stress if you see that happen, but you want to make sure that the flowers that do fully open get fruit set. We can always come back and thin if there's still too many later. that helps give you a little look at what the process of growing citrus indoors is like. Keep keeping in mind that these trees will get moved outside when the weather warms up. But for right now, if I want that fruit set, I need to play pollinator to help my tree get a good set of lemons. going to keep working on finishing this room. I have all of the trim to paint and the wall to repaint to get this 
uh, sunroom nice and set up to move all the rest of my plants back in. But I hope this little view was helpful for you, this little quick and dirty video about pollinating our citrus now in late winter and early spring while we still have them indoors so that later this summer we can enjoy a flush of delicious citrus in the home garden. I'll be back with a regular video tomorrow. Thanks for watching today. Take care and happy gardening.